Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason. You're watching Old Car Auto Guy. We've got a little bit of an update on the Dodge Durango that's been sitting out back. Stay tuned. So you will notice the Dodge Durango is not sitting over here where it normally is. It's actually being towed so we can get it into the shop and find out what's going on with it. So now she's a pusher. Just use the plow. That's the easy way to do it. Well, where's the fun in that, Tim? Nobody gets hurt and bashing their teeth off the ground, <laughs> pushing it in with the plow. So my money's on a seized motor. I haven't heard it. Well, when you go to start it, it just clicks like a bad starter. But if the starter can't turn the motor, Wrench on the front of the crank here, we'll see. Yep. Maybe the old never stuck. Big 4.7. What you looking for? Well, Frame looks good. Not bad, really. Overall, the rear diff is dry. Tires are fairly decent. Brand new spare, huh? Well, Frame is like. Even got a little bit of rim on the spare, yeah. Surprising. The engine. Is locked. Yeah, is it, is it because the starter is locked in place, or? I guess as good as mine. Yeah, she sees right there. Pull the plugs out. Uh, see if it's hydraulic lock or not. Dump some transmission fluid in them. Oh, she's probably frigged. Frigged. Camera's rolling. Toasted. <laughs> <laughs> That's what editing's for. She's toast. Yeah. Well. Well, the rest of the vehicle is, in, is really not that bad. I mean, you got a little bit of rust on the rockers and stuff like that, but the frame is good. Tires are good. So we have determined that the motor is in fact seized up on the 2000 Dodge Durango. So now we've got to determine whether we just want to sell it for scrap or park it out back and hold out, try and get, you know, a couple of extra hundred dollars out of it. But, uh, one of the things that it's got going for it is the frame is absolutely 100% solid. Um, and it still has the original paint on it. The four brand new or, or almost brand new Firestone Destination tires are 31, 10, 50 by 15 inch. And uh, the wheels are in good shape. They just need to be cleaned up. So I think there's an opportunity there that if we just sell the truck for scrap and keep the winter or keep the wheels and tires, then we could probably sell the wheels and tires for about what we're gonna get out of the truck and put a few extra dollars in our pocket. So I think at the end of the day, that's what we're going to do. The, uh, the salvage man's gonna give us 200 bucks, and uh, which is basically the going rate for scrap, uh, for a scrap vehicle, especially with a motor that he can't sell. Uh, but he's gonna get it out of weight, likely selling it for scrap. So. Uh, that's what we're going to do is we're going to sell it to the uh, to the junk man and uh, then we'll keep the wheels and tires off of it and put them up on the marketplace facebook marketplace or a buy and sell and try and sell them that way so that's what happens when you take a vehicle on trade that you basically know nothing about when you don't know what the actual problem is 
Now granted, we've been sitting on this thing for about a month and a half now, and uh, we finally had an opportunity to get it in, try and diagnose the problem, and uh, get a game plan in place. So sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. In this case, we lost as far as a vehicle that we can't very well resell, but we will win in the fact that we'll get our money back. And you know what? I'm happy with that. All right, guys, we have got my wife's 2013 Hyundai Veloster Turbo, and as promised, we will be replacing the driver's side rear view mirror. If you don't remember what happened to the rear view mirror, I'm gonna put a link right up here so you can go back and find out how Junior broke Mama's mirror. So what I've got here is the genuine replacement part from Hyundai, and you can see the part number there. This is the driver's side heated rear view mirror. And we are going to be replacing it, but first we've got to get it off there. So I'm gonna set the camera up and then we're gonna show you how to do it. So as you saw my tools sitting on the roof, these are just a couple of plastic wedge tools that we're gonna to use to get in behind the mirror and pry that open. A lot of these mirrors are different in how they pop off the inside. Some of them you've got to pry the bottom and then just lift up because they're hooked at the top. And the easiest way to tell for sure is to take out the new replacement mirror out of the box and you'll be able to see. These two little tabs here are just stainless steel guides. Those will guide it into place. And you'll notice here, here, over here, and all the way around there's these little clips. These will clip in as a full pressure snap in place um, onto the plastic clip in the back. So there's no real right or wrong way to do it other than to get in behind it on two different directions and start prying with the tools. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going in from the bottom as well as the top. So keep in mind that once we get that out of there, we're going to have a couple of wires that plug into this heating element. And you can see the heating element there through the center. And down here, you can see where it is on the original uh, mirror. So let's get this thing out and replaced so that we can start uh, putting the new one back in. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this piece in here in the bottom. And we're going to get this one here in the top. And we're going to basically pry one at a time until we hear a little snap and hopefully that snap isn't breaking anything. You heard that click click, that's the bottom one's letting go. And you wanna be careful too, because this broken glass, if you do pry too hard, this whole thing is moving. You don't wanna get that uh, glass snapping back in the face. So safety glasses would be a good idea. Oh, look at that, whole thing popped out. And we've got some uh, broken stainless clips. So all we're going to do is unplug these two. And I'm going to take note that one of these wires has a white stripe on it. And it's on the top. So we'll make sure that that white stripe goes on the top on the new one. So we got the new one going in. The white stripe goes at the top. So when putting this in place, one thing we got to be careful of is that A, we don't want to break the uh, new mirror but we need to put enough pressure on it so that it snaps in on all eight of those new tabs. And I think it's in there. It's hard because the, the mirror wants to move. So we are gonna test it, see, make sure that the power still works. And it doesn't, unless the key's on, probably. And everything still works, of course, none of that was broken anyway. Okay, so that was pretty easy. There really wasn't much to it. The biggest thing when it comes to replacing these mirrors is making sure you don't break the new one when you're putting it back on there. So anyways, Mama should be happy. She can now back out of the driveway without hitting bubbles like she did almost yesterday. Uh, it's these things, as I've mentioned before, in my video of the five things I hate about my Veloster, one of them was the visibility. And these things are very difficult uh, to back up um, 
you know, your backup camera's dirty, you've got a broken rear view mirror on this side, and when mama leaves for work, it's usually dark out this time of year. So she's only really got one mirror over there that she's relying on. And with these deep tinted windows, well, some of the struggles you have of driving a car that looks cool with tinted windows. Anyways, one last thing we've got to do is the brake light has come on on this vehicle. And so we're going to check the brake fluid and make sure that the brake fluid is where it needs to be. If not, we're going to top it up. So there is the brake reservoir. And as you can see, the brake fluid level is down to the minimum. So we are going to proceed to top that up. All right, let's see if we can pour this in here without uh, getting it all over everything. Not bloody likely. Don't let that brake fluid get on your paint because it will eat the paint off quicker than nothing. And now we'll put the strainer back in. cap back on. I'll wash my hands so that I don't get this on any of the paint. And I might as well top up the washer fluid while I'm here. And if you want to know how to pour washer fluid or anything out of a big jug without it glugging, tip it on its side like this. It allows the air in a lot quicker. It won't glug on you. Doesn't make you a better aim either, but it won't glug at least. <clears throat> so to end off this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about bubbles. And one of the little things that I knew when I bought it was the emergency brake didn't work. This vehicle also has a remote start, so I can start it and warm it up from inside the house if I set up a certain procedure, but without the emergency brake working, I have to rely on this vehicle being on a perfectly level surface in order to use that. So, my driveway, I've got this one little spot that if I can park beside the garage, it will level out, I can leave it in neutral and set the emergency brake even though it's not holding the vehicle thinks it's on because it brings the brake light on on the dash. So what we're going to do, and I, I just believe that this is something that I don't think that I can live without for a couple of reasons. So one, it will make it a lot safer. Uh, on any other vehicle, I probably wouldn't care if it was like an automatic, but because it's a five speed, you want to be able to make sure that you can put that emergency brake on and hold the vehicle in certain situations. Secondly, because of the remote start, I really would like to utilize that more. So we're going to do a video on replacing the rear brakes on this, or at least the emergency brakes, uh, in likely the next upcoming video. So I've ordered those parts. I don't even know what I need yet, but I wanted to make sure I had everything here so that as we're tearing things apart, we'll be able to work with what we have. Thirdly, is it's winter time. And when you're driving a front wheel drive car without any emergency brake, you can't do some fun donuts in the snow. So we want to be able to have a little bit more fun with bubbles in the snow. And uh, so that's another reason why we want this emergency brake working. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't care. Like I said, if it was an automatic, uh, I, I probably just wouldn't worry about it. We know that the inspection sticker is only good until April of next year. So when the inspection sticker is good, unless I want to spend probably another $1,500 on getting the body up to par, with the holes that are in it and the subframe and, and all that stuff then um, we're just going to let this thing go and we'll make sure she goes out with a bang so guys the contest for 1000 subscribers is still on the goal is is to get to 1000 subscribers by january 31st and if we do i'm giving away a thousand dollars cash the catch is if you want to win you got to be subscribed in order to get there so 
Share this video with all your friends, any, anybody that you know that's an automotive geek or whatever you want to call yourself. Uh, share it out there. We do lots of fun stuff as you can go back through my video file and see we're almost at 150 videos. When this one goes live, it'll be, I think, 146. So please share. If you haven't already, I encourage you to subscribe now. Get yourself entered in that contest. Also, t-shirts and hoodies are still available through bonfire.com. It's the first link in the description box below. And uh, I am down to just three extra large in three different colors that I have at home to give out. Uh, so if you want to, you can send me an email and we'll hook up payment arrangements through PayPal. Otherwise, bonfire.com and you'll have them in a couple of weeks. So guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. I love you. God bless. If I don't see you before then, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Take care.